welcome back to my channel. It is time for the long-awaited or <laughs> over-promised um, pan pastel tutorial. So this is the skin tutorial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a beginner one first and then I'll gradually move up to the more advanced ones. So first things first, we got to go over the supplies and what the heck are pan pastels. <laughs> um, for those of you not familiar with pan pastels, they are these little circular compressed pastels that are a very soft pastel. So like, I know normally when you think of pastels, you think of like chalk pastels and how messy they are and you know, you scrape them off, it gets all over the place. This is not the case. These are super creamy. You practically paint them on. They're really fun to work with. And as someone who hates to do skin and pencil, these have been a game changer because I would do tons of portraits and then leave the skin. <laughs> I love the hair, love the eyes, love the lips, but the skin, I. So what I did is I bought the skin pack. You can get this on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. It comes with a few different colors. So I'm gonna flip it over real quick so we can go over the colors. So you'll get a red iron oxide tint, a burnt sienna shade, a burnt sienna tint, your colorless blender, burnt sienna, burnt sienna extra dark, yellow ochre tint, and yeah, that's all that uh, comes in this one. I added an extra colorless blender and titanium white to mine because I feel uh, sometimes I need extra highlights. So you can buy these open stock or you can buy the skin set. I suggest if you're new to pen pastels and skin, going with the skin set um, instead of buying these open stock. Plus then they come in this palette tray. So you just pop the lid off. And then you have your whole palette here ready to go. It's super handy. Uh, like I said, I have put a lot of my pan pastels, like I buy them separately or in tubes, and then I buy the trays with the lids and pop them in there, and life is just so much easier. <laughs> so the hardest part is when they're in here, you're like, oh no, what color is this? Because you got to look underneath. So there might be a few pauses where I'm trying to remember what the heck color I'm using because i got to flip this over. But let's get to tools now. So when you get pan pastels, you do get like a standard uh, flat tool. I think they give you the oval with the skin set. Don't go quoting me on that. And then you'll get some sponges and whatnot too. Over the last couple of months, I have collected all different shapes. Like so I have the oval, the round, I also have a square, I have a triangular. And then I bought this one that honestly looks just like an eyeshadow makeup applicator. And by the way, you could totally just buy an eyeshadow makeup applicator. <laughs> you don't need to buy the overpriced pan pastel version. I just did because it was cool. It comes with some replacement little nibs. So you pop them out like that and then pop them back in. It is handy. Um, when you buy like bigger sets, let me see if I can show you. When you buy some bigger sets, they'll actually send you these little mini, literally, this is like an eye shadow applicator. I could buy a bunch of these at the dollar store. Um, I've seen some people like glue them to sticks because it's kind of hard to work with such an itty bitty piece. That's totally up to you. But I do like this tool. Do you have to buy it though? Absolutely not. And now I have the sponge also. The sponge you almost use kind of like a mixing palette. You kind of brush it off here, dab it on here. It just prevents you from having a huge clump on your tools here and then going to your paper. So let me move these out of the way. All right, so I wanna show you an example. This one's not done yet. I've been playing around with this one here. So I have done a lot of her skin work 
and you'll notice I haven't done her eyes yet. I usually don't even color in eyes or lips until all of the skin is done. And I'm not quite sure if I'm done with her skin or if I want to add a little more contour and whatnot. Because here's what the deal with Pen Pastel. They are super beginner friendly. You screw something up, you can erase it. They're super erasable. So no harm, no foul. That's what's great about them. They erase way better than a colored pencil. You know, it doesn't leave any residue. However, they will move on you until you fix them or spray like with a fixative. So this one I haven't sprayed and set it yet because I'm not totally sold on it yet. Um, and that's why I always tell people if you're doing pan pastels, like, you know, get it all down and then step away, look at it from different angles. Cause sometimes when the light hits it a certain way, you'll be like, oh shoot, there's like a patchy spot here or she needs more highlight here. So I always say, don't set it right away. Wait a little bit. You might need to erase. You might need to layer and then spray it with a fixative. So what I would do next is say this is done. I will spray it down with a fixative so the pan pastel doesn't move. And then I'll go in and finish her eye work and her lips as well. But that's what this one looks like so far. It's hard to tell with this camera setting, I know, but works pretty good. I might switch camera settings for the one we're working on. But here she is. This is the lovely gal we are going to give some skin to. You'll notice I haven't done anything with her lips or eyes. Like I said, I usually don't. On the other one, I had filled in her eyes a tiny bit and her lips, and she looks super ghostly. <laughs> so I don't like to put in the eyes or the lips because I want to wait and see how the skin tone turns out, you know, because that, sometimes I'll change my mind on the eye color or how, like, rosy I want the lips. But, yeah, let's get this going. Um, there's different techniques I'm a big believer that there's no right or wrong technique. It's all right if it's right for you. So if you don't like my method, it's all good. You know, tweak it to your liking. Seriously, just get some pan pastels and print out some portraits and play with them. You can erase it so you don't ruin anything. That's what's great about it. So for me, I actually start with most of my shadows. Like my contours and whatnot and I I'll deepen them again as I go on some people put down a base coat first it's entirely up to you how you want to go about it so I'm just showing you my method I'm not going to get into super deep contours and all that with this one I'll do a more advanced one later consider this more like your introduction to pen pastels okay so I got my palette, and I got my overpriced eyeshadow applicator, as I like to call it. And we are going to start with Burnt Sienna Shade. So that is the medium-ish brown on my tray. So I like to pick up some right here on the tip, and then I dot it on my sponge. And I hope my camera doesn't zoom in and out because that would just not be very nice. But let's start. So very lightly, I'm just going to go in. And right now I'm just adding where I see the shadows. I totally recommend doing this with grayscale. So like this is uh, Mariola Budek. She does a lot of grayscale work, so it makes it so beginner friendly, especially if you're like, where do I shade? I don't always shade exactly where she has it, but for the most part, I do follow a lot of what she does. Just dab it off of my sponge. And again, like, don't worry. If you mess up, you can erase it. If it looks too dark right now, I know it does. It's scary. <laughs> First time I did this, I was like, it's ruined. It's not. 
Um, once you get all your other layers on and like your, you know, colorless blender is a miracle worker. It lightens things up. She won't look as freaky. Okay. So <laughs> just bear with me. But I always like to put shadow up here at the hairline. I just feel like your hairline naturally creates a shadow. Don't mind me if my hand's in the way. I just don't want the picture to move on me. And the colorless blender, like I said, it'll soften it, but it also lightens the color. Now you don't want to go like slap on a huge thick layer or anything and then just assume your colorless blender is going to fix all your problems. But don't panic if it gets, you know, if it looks too dark or it's in the way. Just wait till you get a few layers down before you decide to break out the eraser. Just going in here. I'm following a lot of the grayscale right now. Now a more advanced technique would be not only to use the pan pastels, but you would go back later with pencils and go from there, you know, so you would continue adding your layers with a pencil. You can also do the skin with pan pastels only. You don't have to go back and use pencil. It's just you, would, you need to practice and kind of get used to them. But I've seen people do absolutely amazing work, super realistic, all using just pan pastels, no pencils after the fact. So it can be done, and that's kind of the aim I'm going for. Occasionally I'll touch up some things with the pencils. Like if I think, oh, you know, I need a different lip color than I have in my pan pastels, I'll do that. But I've been practicing because I want to get to that point where I can make it look so realistic without having to touch up with my pencils. And I am by no means like the number one pan pastel, you know, pro around here. <laughs> Um, there's not a ton of us like using them, which is sad. I'm really hoping some more people will, because I'd love to check out their techniques and see if I can learn from them as well. Like, even if I was 100%, you know, ready to go with pan pastels, I would still watch other color alongs and try to learn new techniques, because sometimes people have something that makes it easier or just better looking. I'm always watching tutorials. Even if I know how to color a flower, I'm still watching a flower tutorial. <sighs> Just get some of that dust away. All right, now we're going to grab our Burnt Sienna Extra Dark. And this is the one where you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, what'd you just do? I do it to myself, don't worry. Now this is the extra dark brown one, so we want this only in the deepest areas. I want it in here where her eyes, that fold, definitely want it in her nostrils, even bring it down here, a little. A little extra over here because her face is obviously getting more light this way. And like I said, I grab it on my tool and I blot it on my sponge. You don't have to, um, but it kind of takes off the excess powder. Yeah, let's get some... In these very dark areas here, I definitely want to get these heavy shadow areas. Here. 
Yeah, she looks like she just got beaten up or something, right? <laughs> that one eye. And I usually will go back and even darken it more, but I want to make this beginner friendly, so I don't want anyone running for the hills. All right, I'm going to go back to my burnt uh, sienna shade. So pan pastels are funny in the way they have them labeled. You'll have burnt sienna, you'll have burnt sienna shade, and burnt sienna tint, um, you'll, then you'll have burnt sienna extra dark. So it's hard to get used to at first, but once you get it down, then it kind of comes naturally. Extra dark is obviously the darkest of that family. Um, shade is when they take the regular burnt sienna and mix it with some black. Tint is where they mix it with some white. So if you're buying these open stock, you could technically just buy the burnt sienna black and the titanium white and make these yourself. However, I am lazy and I prefer to just buy it already made for me instead of mixing it up on a palette and hoping for the best. <laughs> All right. So let's add some color. Okay. So now we're going to grab our burnt sienna tint. So that is the one that would have um, white in it. It's the lightest one right there. It looks like a skin tone on your palette. I like to just get a little bit on my spongy. And then, like I said, I pat it on my other sponge. And right now... We're just going to go through and very lightly add this in. Now anywhere I want a highlight, I'm not going to be as heavy. So like where her chin comes in, I want a little bit. I'm gonna blend it right here into this scalp line. And always use really light pressure with these pan pastels because the brushes or the little sponges here are very delicate and they can tear if you just like start pressing heavily or go crazy with it. So just light hand. I mean, it's going to take forever to go through one of these, like, single things of pan pastel colors. Because you use so little. You feel like you're grabbing a lot, but by the end of it, you're just like, wow, I didn't even use that much. And see, I don't worry about covering up her eyelashes and stuff, because I always go back with pencil. That is one thing you'll want to go back with pencil and kind of redefine. I did make the mistake of doing her eyebrows though, so I'm trying not to get those covered too much. So you'll notice I'm leaving a little white here in the center of her forehead. And I'm just trying to get all the splotchies. I mean, the thing about Pam Pastels is they're so much faster than pencils, but also, like, I just feel they take away the stress of pencil work for skin. Um, because, like I said, I love portraits. I really do. But I just do not like uh, the skin part. I, I feel intimidated by it, which is silly, and I need to get over it. But, you know, it's... It's intimidating. <laughs> um, so I just, I don't do it. But when Pan Pastels came out and I tried them for the first time, I was just like, oh man, these are a total game changer. Get under there. Okay. And I'm not worried about covering her lips because I will coloring those later. So 
when you first do like this first layer, you'll see how it's kind of splotchy. You just have to keep going back and adding more where the splotchy spots are and evening out. But also we'll be tackling that with a colorless blender, which will get rid of a lot of it too. Right now I'm just trying to get this base layer in. You can already see all the contour work I had added. See how it's like barely even there now. I always like to leave a little white here on the nose. Leaving a little teensy white here. See I left the white there. Okay, now you can just brush it off very gently because this stuff moves like crazy. So if you brush with a heavy hand or a thick brush, you will spread it across your page. So be extra careful there. Um, I am going to take my other tool and grab some colorless blender. The biggest thing you want to keep in mind is make sure whatever sponge you're using matches the color that you're working with. One time I accidentally grabbed a dark purple and went to do skin. <laughs> Did not turn out well. You can clean these sponges off just by rubbing them off on a piece of paper. But bottom line, just make sure they're clean. So I'm taking my colorless blender and just kind of going over everything very lightly. Just to make sure I get rid of anything that's too splotchy. Again, you just have to be like very delicate. Get some on my ear, but it brushes right off. And you'll see how the colorless blender brought together. I had a little white spot here. It's already brought it together. I always go very gently into the hairline Ideally, you should do this before you do the hair. I just was in the mood to color hair, and then I was like, shoot, I should probably do a pan pastel tutorial. So it was total afterthought. All right, so see how all her contours have semi-disappeared? We're going to go back in with our Burnt Sienna shade, and we're going to just add those back. It's a lot of layering, just like with pencils, but it's just a lot easier to layer, I guess is the best way to put it. Definitely want that chin, oops, that chin defined. Excuse my dog, she just decided she's going to talk while I'm recording. So I'm just going in back in here and adding a little bit more my shadow back. That one around her nose. those ones in there. Get that hairline dark again. You're probably thinking, wait, didn't we just pretty much erase this? We did, but we didn't. Like, if you look really carefully, you can actually see where the original contours stayed in place. So it wasn't like they were erased, they were just softened by that first layer. So we're just gonna keep on adding. All right, now I need this eye. Okay. All right, so with this one, I'm gonna take my colorless blender instead of my um, burnt sienna tint. And take my colorless blender, just kind of go over where I've just put that down and soften it out. See how that softens? Makes it all nice and even as well. So 
Obviously, you don't want like just big old chunky lines showing. You want it to be delicate. Trying to avoid using my brush because my page the other day, I got it all over the place. All over my desk, all over the page. Still with the colorless blender, I'm just softening up a little. Anything that looks too dark, I'm softening. And see, this is super beginner friendly. You could have any coloring level and go this far with your pen pastels. This is definitely a beginner friendly one. When I do my more advanced one, we'll go into even more layers and adding the purples and the yellows to offset. But we're not going to do that in this one because I want to keep it beginner friendly. Okay, so... I want to get a teensy bit of pink on her cheeks just so she looks like she's got blood flowing through here. So we're going to use red iron oxide tint, which is the pink one that comes with your skin tone set. I just pat it off my sponge. And I'm using a tool that has the pink already on it or it's used pink in the past. Just very gently adding it to the apples of her cheek. Honestly, just picture putting makeup on yourself, which is really funny for me to say because I hate makeup and I suck at putting it on. <laughs> but, but that's so if you're good at applying makeup to your face and all that, then you got this. You got this. Add a little pink base layer to her lips. I will, of course, come back and do those with pencil. Just gonna get that in there. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna take the sponge that was using my colorless blender, but I'm going to grab some titanium white. And this is why I put white in my tray. I want to really get my highlights back in here. And at first, you're going to be like, whoa, that's a lot of white. But we will actually go back over. We'll soften it out with our burnt sienna and all that. It's just right now, I'm adding it in so that it's clearly defined. <sighs> Gently brush it off. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but you see how it added that highlight there. That's what we want. We want a natural highlight. Okay. Grab some of my Burnt Sienna tint. I'm just going to come in my areas that I want darker. Bring those inward a little. I'm not covering up my highlights though. Okay. It's blotchy there. Like I said, you gotta kind of look at it from multiple angles, like turn it, lift it to different lights. Like the biggest thing is because sometimes the skin will look even and then you'll walk away and say like an hour later, come back, different lighting and be like, oh shoot, you know, I've missed all that. <laughs> so it's one of those things I'm going to add a little brush of white up here to highlight her brow. Okay, just gently brush away anything loose. 
I'm just gonna grab some colorless blender one more time and blend where I put my highlight and where I put my burnt sienna tint just to bring it all together. And there, all right. Now, we're not done. I am going to do the rest of her skin as well, just so you can kind of keep going with it. Um, but I think I'm going to adjust my camera setting and see if it looks a little better with a different one. It's hard to say. I'm sorry, I'm playing around with my settings when I'm trying to do a tutorial, but I want to make sure you guys can actually see the skin. All right. Just adding a little more of my Burnt Sienna shade where I kind of feel it got washed away. And I just take my colorless blender and soften it. See how it just, it softens it very lightly. And the more pressure and more you have on your sponge, the more effect you're going to have. Yeah. All right, now if I was doing a more advanced one, I'm going to have to rub off right there. See how it kind of got onto her hair? Just take your finger and rub it right back off of there. So it happens when you brush it. That's why I try to be very gentle. So I just blow it off instead. <laughs> All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to tackle down here. All right. So we'll take our Burnt Sienna shade again. I'd already started her neckline, but I'm going to get in there a little more. Obviously, it's really dark right here because her chin... It'd obviously be dark. Make sure my camera. Dark all over here where her hair and all these rosebuds are kind of just chilling. The rest of the body is a lot easier. A lot less contours. I mean, basically, you want to shade where there's items overlapping her skin because obviously her skin's going to be darker in those areas. And then you want to make it a little extra dark, like where she has skin folds. So for me, I know the picture kind of just like cuts off. I'm just cutting her skin off here. Um, <laughs> I've seen people like color their skin all the way down. But to me, I'm just like, eh, I just want the flowers at the bottom. Like to me, that's just where it ends. So I'm going to put shadow at the bottom of where these leaves are. So I'd see more of a shadow this way. Oh, sorry, camera is doing it again. see darker now even though these aren't chalk pastels they can be fairly messy I'm not gonna lie they're just not as messy Just 
evening that out so it's not like a big chunk. So let's grab our burnt sienna uh, tint. I'm just going to start blending out. Now, I didn't spray my hair with fixative. I normally do so that if I get pan pastel on it, I can erase it right off the hair. But in this case, I'm just going to have to use my finger to gently nudge it back to the skin. Like I said, I normally do the skin first because then I'll spray it after I'm done playing around with it and call it good. <laughs> but with this one... I had just been in the mood to do hair, and then I was like, oh shoot, I should do a tutorial. Like, I do like the different shape brushes with this, because then you can get into those smaller crevices. Like, see, in between these petals, I can get in there. I have a triangular tool that's really good for those problem child, child areas. And I'm just doing this very gently. And I did put a thick line here, so I'm going to go over it very smoothly. I don't want to spread that line out. So you can use these tools that are called soft tools but with like two F's. Like I said, you could go to the dollar store and buy some eyeshadow applicators. But honestly, that applicator tool was like eight bucks with the refills, so it wasn't awful. And it's a lot easier to hold. And with the replacements, because you can keep just buying the replacements and not the brush itself. Whereas with your eyeshadow applicators, you would want to find something long or you can like, um, forget who it is, another colorist taped them to like chopsticks. And that was how she got them to be workable. Because she had the same problem, they were just too tiny. It's like working with a pencil that's on its last leg. Just can't get in there. So now I'm taking the colorless blender. And I'm going through everywhere to get rid of the splotchy areas. Because you can get a lot of those with these pastels. But like I said, I highly recommend like standing up, looking at it from different angles, walking away for an hour, coming back. Is it still looking right in the same light? You know, turn the lights off, look at it in daylight, look at with the lights on. So there was one time I did one and I thought the skin was perfect. It was like, oh, so flawless. So I thought. <laughs> um, and then I sprayed it. And the next morning when I was seeing it in the light of day instead of nighttime, it was all splotchy all over. <sighs> Luckily, it was a workable fixative. I was able to kind of go back and... Um, Add more but still all right so I'm taking the burnt sienna extra dark at the moment just because I really want to get a couple of these spots here oh sorry guys the camera did it again but yeah I'm just getting right in there where her neck is and then I want to deepen where her arm is 
Just a little bit extra dark down here. Turn off the hair. All right, so I'm gonna get my colorless blender again. And just soften these out a little. Stay on camera. I'm just using my finger to brush it off. Like I said, this stuff is so fluid right now. Until you spray it with a fixative, you can easily push it right off your colored pencil. That's why you probably should do it first. All right, so she's looking like she's got some skin. I'm not seeing any splotchy areas, but time will tell. I do want to go back to her face and add just a little bit more, I think. So yeah, let's get some more for her face. Okay, so I want to take my Burnt Sienna shade Going here. Colorless blender going again. That's where the colorless blender is like almost kind of like an eraser in a way. <laughs> it's funny because you'll put something on and you're just like, oh my, and then you go over with colorless blender and it's like, oh okay, much better, much better. It just softens it. I wanted to make sure these were defined enough. Okay, let me grab my red iron oxide again. That's the pink. Just gonna add it to her lips. It's always nice because then you have a base coat already working for you. I'm still just working the colorless in spots where I want some highlights. I don't want to add any more white because that'll wash it out a little too much. bit of color around her lips because it seems like she's a teensy too white right there so I'm taking just my burnt sienna tint 
our base color pretty much. I'm just getting in there. Anywhere where it looks like there's too much white. Let's pull you guys up over. Right, let's see. Like I said, I'm always looking at a million different angles. Like, is it straight? How are we looking? <laughs> I'm doing this in the evening. The lighting isn't the best. Hopefully it's translating well on camera. Although I do think I'm going to start doing a lot more portraits. This is just burnt sienna. Um, so I'll be doing more pan pastels and whatnot as well. I just love portraits. They're so relaxing. Actually, the hair is what's relaxing. All right. Yeah, I think we are good. So again, this is my beginner tutorial. More advanced, I would actually go in deeper with her contour lines. I would define this a lot more. I would get this even darker. And while I'm saying that, I want to actually lighten that just a teens. <laughs> it's not that I want to lighten it. It's just I need to balance that brown a little. Um, but then I would also start bringing in my purples and yellows and helping make her skin tone a lot more natural because if you were to look at your skin and really look at it um, you know you would notice that you have a purple and you know some yellow undertones they kind of balance out the whole oops well that was fun uh, they balance out your whole skin tone so that you don't come off looking too yellowish or pale or whatnot See, and right there, I do see a splotchy. Just move that a little. Like I said, you really have to sit here and play with it. You're going to, like, as you look at different angles, catch spots that aren't even. So I'll be playing with this, like, long after this video. <laughs> So maybe I'll like take a picture at the end and be like, okay, I'm, I'm done. Just so you know, because it's, it honestly, like I, like I said, I want to leave mine for a few hours, come back and look at it in a different light and see if there's anything I missed before I go spray it down. Because once I spray it down, there's no more erasing. I can work back on top of it, but it's still not as easy as it is before you spray it. Which I think I'm going to add tiny bit of white here and here. So this is titanium white. You can kind of see how dramatic that white is. I'm just kind of trying to get where the light would definitely hit. And then I'll grab my colorless blender just kind of smooth those out a little. And you'll notice one side of this is darker. It's because I just flip them around. So when I'm working with a dark color, I actually pull it off, turn around, and reuse the sponge because the sponge is ridiculously overpriced. So got to get crafty. Get that off the hair. All right, I'm gonna just gently dust because I have a lot of loose dust. I can see it. And that's one thing with the pan pastels, you'll get quite a bit of loose dust and you wanna get that off of there because sometimes that can give you the illusion that you have something there that's not like you'll think, oh, it's uneven, but it's just you have too much dust right there. Just pulling those. I think we got it off all her hair. A leaf there. 
I think we're looking good. But yeah, there we have her skin. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'll probably end up fiddling with this for hours on end, but this is just a basic how you do it all. So yeah, I highly suggest if you're new to Pan Pastel Skins, just buy the palette. Uh, I think it's like 20 something. I'll link it in the description below though, so don't quote me. Um, and then just as you go on with Pan Pastels, if you find that you like them, buy more tools because the, the kit only gives you one of these soft tools, if I remember right. And then, you know, I've slowly acquired a whole, like, array of different soft tools. Like, I've got all these little ones here, a bunch of sponges. I have, like, an entire pack of sponges. I mean, it's a slippery slope, folks. <laughs> like, as with every coloring supply. But as you get more into it, you're going to be like, well, I need the different angles. I need more sponges so I can do all these colors. So yeah, it's just, you kind of ease into it and then just add to your collection. But I would definitely start with a skin tone. Don't get the portrait set. The portrait set has more than just these skin tones. It does have some of the violets and yellows though, which are handy. But the biggest problem there is it's meant for a full portrait. So we're talking eyes, lips, hair, everything is in that portrait set. You're even going to have some vibrant reds going on. And as a beginner, you might not want that. Plus, I think that thing's like 80 bucks. Um, and if you use it and you decide you don't like it for skin, that's a lot to shell out where you can just get the little skin tone set and be like, all right, let's see if this is worth it. I have been told there's a cheaper brand out there too. I can't recall the name, but if you know, just leave it in the comments below. But yeah, I will keep fiddling with this. And as you guys learn with your pan pastels, like I said, play around with it. Like walk away, check it in a different light, make sure it all looks kosher. And then I spray mine with a workable fixative. It's from Krylon. That way I can go in and add, because I need to do her eye line, I need to do like these white parts of her eye. I need to color in her eye color. I'll probably have to touch up her eyebrows unless I can slowly brush it off with my finger, but that'll take days. Um, so I'll touch up her eyebrows. And then I usually like to take a black Prisma color and go in and redo her eye shadow. Like you can see on my other gal here, I had colored in the eye, but she's not even done. I still need to go do her eye line the whites of her eyes and go back through and define her eyelashes and I don't have she has more lipstick on and I'm not gonna put any makeup on her this gal I might end up adding some eye makeup but that would be with pencil not my pan pastels right now my pan pastel is my base Eventually, one day, I will get to that place where I just straight up pan pastel all the way, but right now, I can do skin, and I can do, you know, deeper contours and contrast with the colors, but that's as far as my practice has gotten me. So yeah, let me know in the comments below if you like pan pastels, and you know, if you have the skin tone set, or if you use the portrait set, and then thank you guys so much for watching i will be doing a lot more portraits and i will definitely do a more advanced tutorial too for those of you who want to learn how to take it to the next level but until then take care